Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, Totally Magic. If you haven't yet hit the subscribe button, then please consider doing so. Also, hit that notification bell next to it, that way you're reminded every time that we do upload a trick. Now, the trick we've got today is something very special. Well, certainly for magicians, it's an ACAN, any card at any number. But this one is slightly different. Now, I do want you to bear in mind that the presentation that I'm gonna do for you is gonna be just an overview of the performance. And the reason being is because I don't have any spectators to help me. So I'm gonna to have to play the part of the magician and the spectator. So do bear that in mind. Without further ado, let's get into the trick. Now in magic, there's a trick known as a classic and this is one of them. It's where a spectator can take or think of a card and then they think of any number and those two elements have a connection. Now the way it's been performed from the likes of Houdini up to David Blaine and beyond, it's always been performed the same, that you choose a card and a number in that order. Now I wanna actually change this because I'm gonna get you to choose a number first. Why? Well, a lot of people believe that choosing the number after the chosen card influences your choice. So to eliminate that, we're gonna get you to think of a number first. But before we do, I do want you just to take the cards, examine them and give them a shuffle. So the spectator can shuffle the pack and examine it. Is that fair? Now, what I'm gonna do is to get you to choose a number. We'll come back to the cards in a moment. I'm gonna turn around and look away because while I do that, I do want you to use this little card in the paper clip and this pen to write down any number between one and 52. Now on that card, you'll see there's a little box that I've drawn. If you can write it in there and then fold it in on itself so no one but yourself knows that number. Now, while I look away, please feel free to cover the card as you write it if you think I might be peeping out the corner of my eye, but trust me, I'm gonna look over here, away from you, and you write the number. So, now I don't have a spectator to do this for me, so what we'll do is we'll get this written now. So the spectator, takes off the paper clip, unfolds the card, and they see the little black box that I've drawn. They will then write a number on here. So we've got a number written on there. They then refold this and put the paper clip back on. Once they've confirmed they've done that, I can now turn back around like this and carry on with the routine. Now this stays in full view all along. Now I'm gonna spread the cards because I want you to pick any card from the pack that you shuffled. Now if you think that maybe when you were shuffling that I managed to see some of the cards on the face, or maybe I've caught a glimpse of some of the cards at the top, maybe you don't wanna pick from the top or bottom, you can pick any card from the spread and it is an absolute free choice. Now the spectator will slide out any one of the cards. That is an absolute free choice. I want you to look at it, remember it. So there is your freely chosen card. Now what I'm gonna do is just shuffle the cards and you put the card back in so that we can lose it in there somewhere. Now we'll even give the cards a final cut. From this point, I'm not gonna to touch the cards at all until the very end. But let's just recap what's happened. We took a deck of cards that you shuffled and examined. You wrote a number before you chose a card. So this number we can't change. And we have a shuffled and cut deck of cards. For the first time, tell me, what was the number that you wrote? 15, okay. Now just to confirm this, let's just check this. If we open this up, 
we can see that you did indeed choose number 15. The cards are set in here. We're going to deal down to the 15th card. In fact, we are dealing face down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Just confirm that is the 15th card there. You're welcome to check these. Uh, remember, you did shuffle the cards that we're using. There's your card, there's your number. Two things that I couldn't have known, but they have a connection. The number and the card. For the first time, tell me what was the card you looked at. The nine of spades. And there is the nine of spades in the 15th position. Any card at any number, a favourite among all magicians. Now, on this channel, we've done dozens of variations of the any card at any number, or even the card at any number. People love them, mainly magicians, but I do believe that the audience do enjoy them as well. And I've owned many variations of this over the years, and they're all pretty good. But they all involve some sort of uh, trickery along the way as you can imagine but there is one thing that everyone's been trying to achieve and that is having the spectator shuffle the deck now the only way we can achieve this is at some point in the routine we need to swap out the deck now I've told you that if you go back and watch the performance you'll say I know how it's done because it's that simple. The trick itself isn't difficult to do at all, but there is a, a trick deck. Yes, to have this performed, you do need a stacked deck. Not just that, but it's a particular stack because it's a truly fake deck. This one, by the way, is regular. There's nothing odd about this deck at all. So you just need a regular deck of cards. I also make up this little um, piece of card. I just cut a, a small strip of cardboard. Okay, paper is too thin. So a little bit of card and I just fold it in three. So I fold up and down like that. I then draw a little box on this part so they can write in it. Okay, now and I just put a little paper clip on there and you're done. I think it's a very powerful effect because they are choosing the number first of all and then the card and not the other way around. So with that in mind, let's go through what else you need, the deck switch. Now, I've got another deck here identical to this, but it may look totally normal as you can see here. Watch what happens if I go further. Nine, 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 nine. They're all the same cards. What I did, I took a pack of cards that were 52 cards all the same. I removed about 10 of them and I added a few regular cards at the bottom and a few regular cards at the top. That's all that's required. Okay. Now this deck is in my pocket to start with okay at the beginning of the routine now I'm gonna leave the deck switch up to you there's loads of different uh, tutorials on the internet for deck switching you might use a box you might use a jacket pocket or something like that but you know what you don't need to do this uh, you know in any secret way because nobody's paying attention to you and let me explain what I mean I've got my fake deck in my pocket. These cards here, let me just run through the routine briefly and explain what I'm doing. You ask a spectator to shuffle the cards, examine them. Now this is important because by them handling the cards, looking at all the cards, shuffling the cards, you've eliminated that this has anything to do with any trickery whatsoever. 
The heat is never on the pack from now on. Trust me, you've eliminated that just by doing this. In the moment of me just turning my back or side on as I'm telling them, my hand comes down and I just do a switch. Now this switch is pretty quick, yeah? You literally just switch the pack for the ones in your back pocket, okay? So that what you've done is just do a, a straightforward switch. It doesn't have to be fancy, trust me. Why? Well, because when you turn around, what you're actually doing is to do the switch from the regular cards to the stack deck. Let me show you the moment that happens, okay? So my cards, in my pocket, these ones, they've just shuffled. You turn around, you say, what I'd like you to do is open that up and you're gonna write a number. Now look how long I've got. They're looking at me, they're not paying attention to this and you can bring it up into play again and just say, look, have a look at this here. They take this off, they open it up, it's blank and you say, just grab the pen. Look at all the time in the world you've got to actually do a switch of one pack for another, okay? It's that simple. So and that's what I did in the routine is switch one packet from the other, okay? Now, now that you know that, let me just leave these here and I've got this other deck switched in. Try it yourself. Stand in front of a mirror, have a pack of cards in your pocket, either in your front pocket, rear pocket, or if you've got a, a belt clip, I know some people use those, whatever method you use, try it. Stand in front of the mirror, just turn sideways and just talk, and then maybe turn back around, and then turn back, and then say, write it, I'm not looking. You've got all that time. Now, the good thing about this, they're concentrating on writing the number and putting the clip back on. That gives you plenty of time to do that. When you come forward with the switched deck, remember all the heat is off of this. They've just shuffled it. They've examined it. Why should anything be wrong with it? And that's the beauty of this. You come forward again, you've done this. Now, another thing you have to remember that most general public can't understand why anyone would want to own more than one deck of playing cards. Most people probably have one deck of playing cards for 30 years in their kitchen drawer. So for you to have two cards on you, they're not even thinking of that. It doesn't even enter their mind. I know as magicians, we always think along that, or people know you've switched that. No, they don't. Trust me. And you've seen this many times on stage when magicians turn their back and then come back again. Little did you know they just swapped the pack over. It's, it's, it's a great move. I've never had a problem with this. You will have a problem if you don't give them something to do. You want all eyes to be on here. So I've got the switch deck in. They've done their number. It can be any number. You're not interested. I take the cards, I say, I tell you what, let's take your shuffled cards, note that phrase, because I'm reiterating that they did examine and shuffle the cards, but I'm not making a big deal of it. Yeah, just casually. Now the cards that you shuffled, I want you now to pick a card from here. Now what I'd like to do is just to give a little bit of a, a teaser to say it is a regular deck and you'll saw in the routine where I kind of went to the bottom and just pulled out a few and just said, in case you think while you were shuffling, I caught a glimpse of the cards on the face or that maybe I've had a peek at some of the top cards. And by showing these, you're just reiterating that it's a regular deck that they just shuffled. So you say you may want to pick anything from anywhere in in here. Again, trust me, they're not going to pick these. Not now you've shown them. 
because you've seen the faces of them. So they go for a card. It doesn't matter what card they pick because it's always going to be your false card. So they pick the card out. You gather the cards up. I then tend to do an overhand shuffle slipping the top and bottom cards. So I know that I've got a stack of regular cards here and at the back. This is what I tend to do. When I shuffle, I pull off the five or six cards I know are regular here. Do a sloppy shuffle, and then when I get near the end, I start to pull cards off one at a time. So basically, you've just switched them over. You've now got regular cards on top, and you've got some regular cards at the bottom. That's it. You've shuffled the cards, and while I was doing the shuffle, I get them to put their card back anywhere in there. You're all done. I even do a false cut just to finish off. I leave the cards on the table. This is the strength of the trick because nobody touches these. I'm not removing these from a box and altering their order. I'm not shuffling them or cutting them at all once that number's revealed. Okay, everything seems clean. So with that in mind, they reveal their number and it turns out to be 15. 16, 20. And for those of you that are screaming at me now saying, what if they chose one, two, three, or 52? I'll explain an out from if that occurs, but trust me guys, how many times have you watched, not me, but professional magicians that do this for a living and they ask spectators for a number between one and 52? All of them tell you that in their whole career, they've never had people pick one, two, three, or 50, 51, 52. It is very rare. However, if you're kind of paranoid that what if they do, what if they do, and you panic about that, I show you a very simple out, but trust me, you're not gonna need that. So the number obviously can't be one to five or 48, 49, 50, something like that. So those numbers, when this is revealed or they call out their number, then you know if you need to go into this out that I'm about to show you. But let's just take it as read that it's a regular number. Most people pick between 20 and 30. You count down. Now, this happened to me the other week when I was performing this for uh, some close friends. I actually chanced my arm and gave the cards to my friend to deal. And I said, look, you count down the cards on there. Now, what he started to do was to deal them like this. But what I did, I stopped him and said, I tell you what, as a surprise, let's not see any of the cards at all. And I turned them over. Now, this actually strengthened the effect because they saw that they were regular cards. And they can deal five cards, up to five cards down there. So you might want to include that in your routine to say, look, we're going to deal the cards. In fact, not face up, face down to get to your number. There's two. You then do the count. Okay, it doesn't matter where you stop. You're always going to end up with their card. Okay, pretty obvious when they're all the same. Now what you can do is you can turn the pack over in your hand because remember you've got these regular cards here and you can just spread a few. Not too many, and just say, look, from the shuffled cards that you examined earlier and you can turn over this packet because you've got these ones here as well and you can just drop them on there. Remember, from the start of this trick, the heat is never on this deck. Trust me. The trick's done. So what happens if the number they chose was one, two, three, or 50, 51, 52? Trust me, guys, you're not gonna need to know this because it's not gonna happen. But in the unlikely event it happens once in 50 years, all you gotta do is as soon as you say to them, what number did you write down? And they say, I wrote 
three. What you say, okay, now before we do anything, I shuffled the cards. I want you to decide where to start dealing from. Can you cut anywhere and complete the cut? And wherever you cut is where you're gonna begin counting. They cut the cards and complete the cut. Now what they've done, they've now put those regular cards, those five regular cards on top and the bottom, they're now in the middle. At both ends, we've got all the nines, okay? So if they did pick one of those numbers, one, two, three, it's gonna be their number there, and you can just put the pack to one side. Everything is on here, number and card, that's it. So now that you know how the trick works, take all the various elements of writing miss, the misdirection, the, the two decks to switch out, and kind of mold it into how you would present it so you feel comfortable with it. Some of the, my ideas you might just throw out the window and say what a load of rubbish that is, but that part was quite good. I might use that part. Remember, the great thing about this that makes it very strong is the fact that the spectator examines the pack at the start and shuffles it. Once that's been done, the heat is taken off the deck throughout. It really is, okay? So, it's never a perfect A-can. I don't think we'll ever find a perfect A-can, but this one gets us a little bit closer. I hope you enjoyed that one. Take care.